Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here with StringTheory.com, uh, back in the second installment of our daily Q&A series. Uh, so two days in, still uh, still every day, so that's, uh, that's a good start, I would say. Uh, question today is, um, do I need to train different muscles differently? Should I train them in different rep ranges uh, based on fiber type breakdown? Um, I thought this was a good question because uh, I, I see this get asked a lot. I think this is a common idea out there that uh, particular muscles are either predominantly type 1 muscle fibers, type 2 muscle fibers, uh, and because of that you should train them differently. Uh, I am not really on board with this idea for three main reasons. Uh, the first is that... Um, <laughs> kind of in general, uh, just as a starting point, most muscles don't really have one predominant fiber type. Um, some notable exceptions there, your soleus, uh, one of the muscles in your calves, um, they are typically 85% plus slow twitch type 1 fibers, um, and some of your eye muscles, uh, and also forearm muscles, uh, finger extensors, um, some of those are... 80-90% plus type 2 muscle fibers. But the majority of the muscles in your body uh, are essentially pretty close to a 50-50 mix of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Um, now there is some inter-individual variation there. Um, some people are very, very fast twitch dominant. Some people are very, very slow twitch dominant in general. Um, but when kind of dealing with averages, so if you're giving typical advice like most people should train hamstrings with low reps because they're predominantly fast twitch. That's something I hear a lot. Uh, there's really not good evidence to support that. Hamstrings, pecs, delts, lats, um, there's quads. There are multiple studies looking at uh, fiber types in those muscles um, and a, a page with a breakdown of all of those studies will be linked in the description of this video. And uh, what you'll see is that, uh, you know, some studies it may be 60-40, uh, 65-35, something like that, but the, the majority of studies for the majority of muscles do kind of cluster around a pretty even mix of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. So um, that's, that's my first problem with this idea. One, uh, most muscles aren't really predominantly type 1 or type 2 in general. Um, now, the second thing is uh, people have this idea that you can test your muscles to see if they are predominantly type 1 or type 2 um, by taking a particular percentage of your 1 rep max and taking it to failure. So maybe 80% for as many reps as possible. If you get fewer than 8 reps, it's probably mostly fast twitch fibers uh, because it gave out faster. If you can get more than eight reps, and it's probably predominantly slow twitch fibers, um, that's that's a test I see uh, some people recommending to determine what your predominant fiber type in a particular muscle is. Uh, but there's a problem with this as well. This has been studied uh, twice. I, I would need to look for these papers again. One of them, though, um, found no significant correlation whatsoever between uh, predominant muscle fiber type and how many reps people could get with a given percentage of their one rep max. The other one did find a significant correlation, uh, but if memory serves, the correlation coefficient was like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, um, which means the R squared, the uh, um, coefficient of determination was like 0.16 to 0.25, something like that. So in other words, less than a quarter of the variation in number of reps people could get um, was explained by fiber type itself. So uh, there, there very likely is some relationship uh, between the predominant fiber type in a muscle and how many reps you could get with a given percentage of your one rep max if, if you wanted to try to test it like that. Uh, but it's not a very sensitive or accurate test. Um, so you know, odds, odds would be pretty good that unless you were just on the very extreme end of the spectrum, so, you know, maybe if you were comparing uh, your, your finger extensors to your soleus, very, very predominantly fast twitch versus very, very predominantly slow twitch muscle, um, you know, that very well may be a meaningful difference, but um, 
for pretty much every other muscle in your body, that test would pick up a lot more noise than signal. So um, there's there's not really a good practical way uh, to know if if one of your muscles or multiple of your muscles are predominantly one fiber type or not. Uh, the only way to know for sure is uh, actually to get muscle biopsies. And if you want to go to a lab and have people stick big needles in all of your muscles and rip out little chunks of your flesh all over your body, uh, then you can know what your predominant fiber type is in each muscle. Um, but most, most people aren't going to do that. Uh, so first problem, just in general, most muscles are a pretty even mix of fiber types. Two, uh, if you're if you're concerned for yourself that you know maybe some of your muscles are predominantly type one or type two, which can certainly happen, uh, there's no easy test for it. Um, simply seeing how many reps you can get with a given percentage of your one rep max um, that may that may be that is probably correlated with fiber type to some degree, but it's just not a very good test. It's not a very sensitive test. Picks up uh, a lot more noise than signal. And uh, the last thing is even if you did know that uh, one particular um, muscle was, say, much more type 1 dominance, whatever. Like, let's say you go to a lab, um, you get your quads biopsied, and normal person's quads would be about 50-50 type 1 and type 2. Let's say yours are 80% type 2. Uh, does that mean that your best bet would be to train your quads heavy, explosively, you know, ty types of things that you would think would, would be better for type 2 fiber growth? Uh, and here's, here's the real issue. There's really not uh, good evidence that that would make a meaningful difference. Um, Studies are all over the place here. For the most part, what you tend to see is regardless of rep range used, type 1 or type 2 fibers tend to grow uh, between 50 and 75% more than type 1 muscle fibers do, really with almost any rep range. Uh, there are some studies that, that could be used to argue uh, preferential type 1 versus type 2 fiber growth, um, but... They're, they come out on, on both sides of the issue. So one by, I know I'm going to butcher this researcher's name, but Schwenke, I believe, um, actually found that uh, high rep training that people would tend to think would be better for type 1 fiber growth um, caused growth of type 2 fibers but not type 1 fibers, whereas lower rep training caused growth of both types of fibers. So that that would lead you to believe that if you want type 1 fibers to grow, uh, those slow twitch fibers, you would need heavy training for that, and that lighter training is ineffective for that, uh, which would run kind of counter to this theory. The, but then there was another study by Mitchell um, that was comparing working with 80% versus 30% uh, and found that overall muscle growth was the same, but that there was a lot more uh, type 1 muscle fiber growth, slow twitch muscle fiber growth, um, with the uh, lighter, higher rep training, which would kind of be in line with this theory. So um, evidence, evidence is mixed, and it's really, really inconclusive whether lighter, higher rep training is actually more beneficial for type 1 slow twitch muscle fiber growth, and whether heavier, more explosive training would be better for type 2 uh, fast twitch muscle fiber growth. So uh, just kind of to recap, I don't think when... So, okay, assuming that your primary goal is just hypertrophy to get as jacked as possible, um, your best bet across the board is probably just to train uh, with a variety of rep ranges, regardless of what muscle you're talking about. Uh, the idea that you should train different muscles differently uh, based on fiber type breakdown probably doesn't hold much water. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you do have to train every muscle exactly the same. That doesn't mean that there aren't other factors that may influence how you train particular muscles. But to base a lot of how you're training a muscle on what its predominant fiber type is, uh, in my opinion, that doesn't hold very much water because, one, most muscles that you'd be dealing with, except maybe your soleus, are probably going to be a pretty even mix of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers in the first place. 
Two, um, there's not a good easy test to that that has much predictive power uh, to to get a good idea of it, whether a particular muscle is type one or type two fiber dominant. And the last thing is, even if you could know that, um, the evidence at this point is very very mixed, uh, very unclear about whether high or low rep training can specifically target a particular fiber type. So um, in short, I think, I think it's an interesting idea and um, I think it's a ripe area for research that um, you know, may either uh, kind of rain on this parade a little bit more or validate it a bit more in the future. Uh, we'll just see as things move forward, but at this point, um, when planning a training program, I don't really think, um, again, for hypertrophy specifically. So this is not about endurance training. This is not about power training. This is just simply about trying to get jacked because this is where this idea is typically applied. Uh, for hypertrophy training, I don't really think uh, this, is, this is something you should really be using um, as, as a main guiding principle for program design. Um, for most people, most of the time, uh, your best bet is just going to be to use a variety of rep ranges regardless. All right, guys, so that is the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have training questions that you want answered, uh, ask them below, and I will pick my favorite one and answer it tomorrow. Uh, and until then, enjoy your training, and I will see you in that next video.